So considering how long day game and pickup has been going on for, I don't think anyone's actually spoken about the development cycle that a lot of men go through when they get themselves involved in the, uh, the dating industry or community. So I wanna take the opportunity in this video to show you what that development cycle looks like for your normal everyday person, as well as what I have seen over the years with the normal people and the difference between what a dating coach would experience and a pickup artist would experience. And hopefully with these different examples, you'll see which one is gonna be the uh, the more appropriate coach for you to be working with. Um, so we're gonna start off by looking at the development cycle of just your normal everyday guy. So you can see here on my screen, uh, I've got this very colorful diagram that I've put together. And I will also state for the record, uh, these three diagrams are information that I have certainly collected over the many years of being around coaches and just your normal everyday guy who got themselves involved in the dating industry because they wanted to improve their lives. So you've got these four colors. Um, these represent the four different phases that every guy goes through. And um, you can see here, I've got women on the side and time along the bottom. And the way in how this graph kind of then goes through on this journey, it starts off where you're meeting a very, very small amount of women, if any, rises much more steeply as your growth and development gets more interesting and then eventually kind of like rounds off. Um, I'm also aware that this image does look a little bit like a sex toy. Um, when I was putting this together, I was thinking like, there's no way to uh, avoid this. So we're gonna have to work with it. Um, if it means it makes this even more memorable, then brilliant, uh, that's gonna be fantastic as well. Uh, I'm also gonna just turn the, whoops, that looks incredibly bright on there. There we go, that's that's a little bit easier. Um, uh, so if it makes this image more memorable, then so be it for you. So let's just go through each of these phases. So the first one is the exploration phase. So this is when you get essentially introduced to the idea of doing street approaching or day game and you're testing the water with it or you're dipping your toe in it. You're going out and maybe giving like a compliment or you're just going out and trying to maybe ask for directions with people or trying to start a conversation and you're getting maybe a lot of rejections or people looking at you going like, what's going on here? So this tends to also be the phase that a lot of people tend to drop out of as well um, because it is still doing something that is against the social norm, which, you know, we, we all kind of know that, but this is where though those that do stick around with it they get an idea of you know what is it like to just test those comfort zones and test in fact the reality that they have or perceive um with their everyday life so going into then the second phase which i've called the state of flow so this is where the guys tend to um, push those boundaries that little bit more. It might even be where they uh, start considering or working with a dating coach um, who is gonna push them into more situations that they never would have thought of before. And they are gonna overcome a lot of uh, uh, comfort zone boundaries that have prevented them from being a much more confident version of themselves. So they're starting to break these barriers that have held them back. And so as you can kind of see, the graph slowly starts to get a bit more of an incline. So where they weren't really meeting any women and they weren't really getting any results, they start experiencing results. Maybe not much, but they do at least start getting some more positive experiences and a lot of like positive reference experience as well but they are understanding that things aren't so bad in life and um, they can get away with doing a lot more things than what they thought they could before. And especially if they're seeing people's reactions with that. 
But this is where then things do start getting interesting. And this is where I would call the next phase, the experimental phase. This is where they have now found a new sense of confidence and they are just literally talking to everyone, asking all sorts of questions, learning to be more flirtatious, more confident, more ballsy, developing their masculinity and sexual energy as well. And that is ultimately going to mean that they are going to have better interactions with women. They are going to go on more dates. They, yes, they are going to sleep with more women. Some of my words are they are going to sleep with more women and they're going to find more relationships of sorts as well. So this is where then you get a very steep rise um, in that development and in a short space of time as well. Um, it's almost like as if uh, if you've been pushing a car up a hill and then as soon as you get to the top of the hill, suddenly that gravity kicks in and pulls it down even faster. So that speed with the, uh, the guy's development just grows tremendously and, you know, they reap the rewards from that as well. But eventually, though, they do hit a plateau and, you know, as they're now going through experiencing what it's like being able to date women that they've never been able to date before. Um, they're going to eventually get to a point where they have experienced all there was to experience. Um, this as well, maybe this can be, this varies from guys to guy for how long they might stay in this cycle for. So, but, so it's not necessarily, it's going to be like, you know, a month per, per each of these, you know, um, but there is certainly that plateau, um, that a guy hits and then, um, things change. And, and this is where then it goes into the, uh, the last cycle where guys tend to have maybe some kind of exit strategy to the world of, uh, of doing day game. And they do eventually reach a state of self-actualization. And that is what this last phase is they get to a point where they essentially reach this level of maturity, they understand their own self-worth, and they realize that they don't need to be trying to date and sleep with every girl that they uh, they come across, that they can afford now to be more picky, and it becomes this realization of quality over quantity. Um, and it's usually at that point that, yeah, they do tend to sleep with a lot less women, but they are dating much higher quality women as well. And they also find a newfound um, interest in life and they find more things that they want to do in the world. They're not necessarily caught up in the idea of like just meeting women is their entire world or universe. Like they, they want to explore, they want to be curious and they want to find out more what the world has to offer them in particular. So this is where then it will start to level off and, and plateau on a much lower level, but they do find a state of self-actualization where they're happy and content with who they are and with the women that they're dating and certainly it's also usually during this phase that guys tend to find themselves getting into relationships. So hopefully at least this kind of makes sense for, you know, your normal everyday guy that they basically get themselves into testing the waters with it. They get curious to know what it would be like to push their comfort zones more. So they then start going out and practicing and training more and more, talking to people, getting used to having uh, conversations and flirting. So they develop their confidence, their masculine energy, and uh, certainly the amount of women that they are talking to, which then eventually kind of like pops and erupts into this uh, phase of being able to talk to anyone and having uh, no fear with doing it and having all of the experiences that they've wanted to experience, get that out of their system and then eventually find sort of this state of Zen and self-actualization that they want to just have uh, have quality over quantity. So this is the, the normal, what your normal everyday guy goes through. So now I just don't want to compare that to what a 
pickup coach will go through and a dating coach will go through. So I just remove that. I mean, I'm now going to put the pickup coach. So you can kind of see here that the coach or a pickup coach doesn't reach self-actualization. They get stuck and stay in this experimental phase that all they do is just obsess over meeting women. And truth be told, this can be a little bit dangerous because um, this is where guys, I think, get a bit too over-obsessed with doing pickup and they lose touch with reality. And I've seen it happen where they are consumed by this idea that, you know, meeting women is their world and they neglect their friends, their family, their jobs even, and they obsess over this. And they also forget how to have normal relationships with people. Everything can become very much um, a game to them, um, which can also develop very narcissistic and sociopathic behaviors, which isn't, isn't healthy at all. Um, you know, and then years can go by and they'll be still stuck in this phase and, you know, they can't hold down any kind of relationships or friendships even um, because they are just so used to having this mentality of only getting what they want. Um, there's a, a great concept um, based on a story of uh, Dorian Gray um, and uh, they get the Dorian Gray effect, which basically just means that they get this insatiable lust that can never be fulfilled. Um, and uh, it will mean that they'll keep doing more extreme things to get that high, that adrenaline rush and kick from meeting women. And it can get really dark. It's where then like guys start focusing on like ruining relationships or marriages and, you know, and, and just uh, solely going for women who are, um, aren't single and stuff or, or are parents that, you know, it can get really dark. I've seen very twisted things over the years. So this is where I don't recommend probably going to a pickup coach, but this is where though, that they do tend to stagnate and they don't really develop that maturity in knowing like, you know what, there is more to life than women. I need to, you know, look to do other things in my life as well. Um, you know, you have to also ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice to get good with women? Because, you know, if time is certainly an important factor here, then the more you dedicate yourself to doing something, then the less you're going to be doing of other things. So you have to bear in mind that, yeah, if you're going to be focusing on doing, uh, on pickup or, or, or street approaching, make sure that you do have an exit strategy because otherwise you're going to be stuck in this experimental phase. So now if we just compare that to what a dating coach goes through, they are the exact same as what a normal person would go through, but uh, the amount of women that they will meet during that self-actualization phase is going to be a lot higher because this is their industry that they work in. You know, it's, it's their job to be talking to women and doing demonstrations and stuff. Then of course, they're going to go on more dates and stuff than your normal everyday guy. But as you can see, that cycle is so much more relatable for the normal guy and a dating coach than it is for a pickup coach. So I hope that this gives you a bit of insight into the development cycle that you might go through if you're going to get into doing uh, street approaching or maybe you've been in it for a while. In fact, I would love to hear in the, uh, the comments below where you are uh, in these cycles and what currently you're experiencing, whether it be your struggles or the positives or, you know, I would just love to hear um, how things are going for you. And I want you to then if you are someone who is thinking about getting into working with a coach, this is where I do want you to consider working with a dating coach rather than a pickup coach. Yes, a pickup coach is gonna um, teach you the skills to be able to meet women also, but I would just say it's just be very cautious that they aren't just manipulating you into uh paying for their lifestyle rather than giving you the uh, the tools um, and knowledge that you need to be able to meet women on your own as well. So 
I really hope you like this video. Uh, if you can, certainly like it. Subscribe to my channel where I will be sharing even more information to help you on your development journey, whether it be getting over your, uh, your fears and phobias and anxieties of meeting women to build your confidence or hold you accountable and get you to be improving your life for the better and helping you as well with your mental health, which is certainly a really, really important thing to, uh, to bear in mind. So with all of that said, thank you for watching, subscribe and look forward to more content in the future.